This video is made possible with the support of Headphones.com, the home of the 365 day return policy. Headphones.com has some of the best service and selection in the personal audio industry. Visit Headphones.com today for all your personal audio needs. Hey friends, good to see you again. If this is your first time checking out the YouTube channel, my name is Marcello. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Ross and Audio Design Rad Zero. Rossin Audio Design, otherwise known as RAD, was created out of Alex Rossin's love and passion for music, art, and engineering. Alex has been surrounded by the music business most of his life. As an engineer and musician, Alex grew up in the audio and film production world from a very young age. Many viewers may remember Alex, especially for his role in co-founding and becoming CEO of Odyssey. Alex has also been involved with, led, or created many other products outside of his former work with Odyssey. Rossin Audio Designs is Alex's own unique quality over quantity approach to HeadFi, utilizing a small team with unique talents and expertise to create handcrafted one-of-a-kind headphones that deliver accuracy and a visceral audio experience audiophiles crave. To give you my impressions of the Rad Zero, I utilized several headphone amplifiers and digital analog converters to draw my conclusions about the sound of the Rad Zero. I compared the sound signature of the Rad Zero primarily to two other headphones that I had on hand during the review, the ZMF Ferte Open Desert Ironwood Limited Edition and the Meze Empyrean. I will discuss my audio chain throughout the review and list the gear used in the video description. As with all my audio reviews, I will also provide the music playlist I use to evaluate the headphones so you can listen along. I have not received any compensation for my opinions and all thoughts and beliefs are my own. The review will cover five main areas, build quality and comfort, quality of sound, including bass, mids, and treble, tonality, imaging, and soundstage, and lastly, synergy and comparisons. Make sure to stick around to the end and I will give my overall conclusions and comparisons to a couple of other headphones. So let's jump right in. I wanna thank Taryn and Andrew from headphones.com for sending me out the Rad Zero for me to listen to for an extensive review period. The support of great companies and individuals sending me products to review is what allows me to continue to bring you guys new content. So let's talk build quality, specs, comfort, and design. The Rad Zero is built around a 66 millimeter transducer designed and manufactured at Ross and Audio's lab in Reseda, California. The 66 millimeter transducer is the heart and soul of the Rad Zero. Alex and his team use a composite diaphragm material, a unique circuit design, and an array of 11 N52 neodymium magnets. Surrounding the driver is one of the more aesthetically pleasing cups I have had the pleasure of holding. Using micarta, stabilized choice woods, rocks, gems, and other unique materials, Alex's team uses molds to cast the rings, making sure that no two cups will ever be the same. Prospective buyers also can order a custom design if desired or purchase one of the many unique designs already made. 
Rawson's Rod Zero uses a curved headband design that connects to a gravity system, allowing its cups to be adjusted up and down. The cups also have great swivel for different size heads. The Rad Zero uses clamp force and very dense ear pads to distribute the weight of the approximately 615 gram to 670 gram Rad Zero. Overall, the weight didn't bother me when listening to the Rad Zero, even though they are on the premium headphone market's heavier side. One of the reasons I believe the weight didn't bother me as much as the headphone from Head did was the Rad Zero seems to be very well balanced when I'm wearing them. The oversized sustainable leather-free pads with soft inner faces are also extremely comfortable and didn't cause me any issues, even for longer listening sessions. The one point, if any, I had with the build quality of the Rad Zero related explicitly to the cup's gravity system used with the headband. I found that over time, the cups would slide down further on my ears than I would have liked due to their weight. However, according to Alex, a person can potentially alleviate this by increasing the clamp by gently bending the headband. The demo Rad Zero I had for review had also been in the hands and on the heads of a few other individuals, so take this with a grain of salt. Every Rad Zero is pre-burned in at 120 dB for a minimum of 15 days before shipping to ensure they are ready for their new homes. Each Rad Zero ships in a Pelican style case for the safe transport of your headphones and accessories. The Rad Zero has an impedance rating of 29 ohms and an SPL rating of 98 dB, meaning most amps will do a good job of powering it. During my time with the Rad Zero, I found it does perform better with more current via the Balance XLR output on my A90 to scale up and show all of its muscle. The Rad Zero has a frequency response of 20 Hz to beyond audible ranges and less than 0.1% THD. The Rad Zero ships with one 8-foot 3.5mm cable terminated with dual mono 3.5mm connectors finished in chrome and a quarter inch adapter. I was also able to get a Balance XLR cable for the review, which was great. Next, let's get into the quality of sound. The Rad Zero produces an incredibly engaging sound signature with punchy bass, excellent treble, beautiful tonality, and an overall headphone tuning that I can just listen to for hours. Let's dive in a bit deeper. Starting with the bass of the Rad Zero, bass presentation of the Rad Zero is a bit more forward sounding and moves you, especially when listening to tracks like Blinding Lights from The Weeknd or Came For The Low from Zoo. In my time with the Rad Zero, the bass regions became even more dynamic and tight in their presentation when pairing with amps that could output more current. I found myself listening for the majority of the review via the balance connection of the topping A90, Matrix Element X, or the 8 to 32 ohm taps of the ZMF Pendant, Mogwai OG, and Amps and Sound Nautilus. The bass does sound like it has a bit of a mid bass lift and is not entirely neutral, which I enjoy, especially with pop, rock, and electronic music. I can say the Rad Zero is one of my favorite headphones overall for bass so far and how it presents these regions. I found myself being drawn heavily to electronic music, pop, R&B, hip hop, rock, and other more modern music genres when listening to the Rad Zero. The bass sounds dynamic and tight with an excellent sub bass rumble if the track calls for it. I also don't feel like the bass is ever really overdone, allowing it to play very well with pretty much all genres. The mid-range sounds very good, allowing vocals to sound smooth with a touch of warmth, leaving vocals sounding sweet and never fatiguing in my opinion. The majority of singers' vocals fall back a bit in the mix compared to some other headphones, which I will discuss in the comparison section of the review, but not enough not to be thoroughly enjoyable. String instruments in the mid-range sound very good. As a planar magnetic headphone, the Rad Zero does take well to tone control or EQ in the mid-range or the treble region, so you can also add a bit more energy in those areas if you prefer. Treble on the Rad Zero is done very tastefully and is one of the better parts of the headphone tuning. There is good detail and resolution without the treble ever sounding fatiguing to my ears. The Rad Zero doesn't sound extraordinarily sparkly or airy in their presentation, so treble heads may not fall in love with this tuning out of the box compared to some other more treble region focused headphones. However, listeners who prioritize bass and the mid-range will likely feel right at home when listening to the Rad Zero. The timbre of the Rad Zero is another big time plus. Of all the planar magnetic headphones I have listened to at the time of this video, the Rossen Audio Rad Zero sounds the most natural to me. The tonality of vocals and instruments on almost all tracks I heard sounded very pleasing. If you are a fan of ZMF headphone timbre and the natural way they present instruments and vocals, and you are looking for something similar, but in the planar magnetic realm, the Rad Zero should be at the top of your list to demo.
So let's talk about the stage and imaging of the RAD0. The stage of the RAD0 is smaller in size than some other flagship headphones in this price range, which I will discuss more during the comparison section. The sound stage of the RAD0 images accurately, presenting sounds, vocals, instruments, where they should be. There is an okay amount of air on the stage between images. However, if I were going to nitpick one area of the sound of the RAD0, it would be my wish for a bit more air in between images and a larger, more enveloping sound stage. Searching for synergies with the RAD0, I enjoyed it with most of the solid state amplifiers I had during my time with the RAD0, such as the Core TT2, Matrix Element X, Matrix Element M, Matrix Mini i Pro 3, Rupert Neve headphone amplifier, and the topping A90. Whenever possible, I did prefer to run the RAD0 via the balanced XLR output if the amp it was connected to output more current from its balanced headphone connection. The bass to my ears seemed to tighten up more and the dynamics slam harder when the RAD0 is receiving more current. The RAD0 also sounded very good to my ears with most tube hybrid amps I paired with them, such as the Monolith Cavalli Liquid Platinum, the Shitlayer 3, Drop Cavalli Tube Hybrid, and the iFi Pro ICANN. I will leave links in the video description for you to check out for all the products I am mentioning. Finally, the RAD0 also sounded awesome paired with several tube amplifiers, such as the Amps and Sound Nautilus, the ZMF Pendant, and the Amps and Sound Mogwai OG. I only really ran into one amp that was unusable with a RAD0. That was the Felix Audio Elise OTL headphone amplifier, which I believe was because of lack of current causing audible distortion in the bass regions. So this is pretty good news for people interested in this headphone, as it sounds good with the majority of headphone amplifiers I tested. Of course, I did have my favorite pairings. If you want to check out my favorites, I will link them in the video description of the video below for you to check out. I will give you a hint, all of my favorite amps had at least one or more tubes. I hope you're enjoying this review so far. If you are, do me a solid and smash that like button for me and show your support today by subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I appreciate you all. A few in-depth comparisons to other headphones I did while evaluating the RAD0 were with the ZMF Ferte Open Limited Edition Desert Ironwood and the Meze Empyrean. I'll give you some brief subjective impressions. For more in-depth information on each of these headphones, check out their reviews. Remember, when I give you my sound impressions, they are my beliefs and based on how I hear things with a given gear I'm utilizing. Starting with tonality, the RAD0 has one of the most natural sounding tonalities for a planar magnetic headphone. So right out the gate, I appreciated that quality. I felt it sounded more natural than the Empyrean. The tonality of the RAD0 and the Verite Open are closer overall. If you like ZMF headphones, the RAD0 is definitely worth giving a listen to in my opinion, especially if you also like planar magnetic headphones. Overall, the RAD0 to my ears is a bit warmer than neutral, which is good in my opinion as it never sounds fatiguing or bright. It's one of the more enjoyable headphones to listen to for long periods on pure sound quality alone. Bass to my ears has an excellent small lift above neutral, making them fabulous to listen to electronic, pop, rock, and metal. There isn't as much of a kick in the bass regions as the Meze Empyrean to my ears, which may be a good thing for many listeners who like a bit more bass, but not as much bass as the Empyrean. The Rad Zero has a bit more sub bass than the Verte Open. Again, this is a very enjoyable headphone if you like elevated above neutral, clean, impactful, tastefully done bass without it going overboard to my ears. The RAD0 is one of my favorite headphones currently when it comes to bass. As far as dynamic punch goes, the RAD0 sounds pretty dynamic for a planar magnetic headphone, a bit less dynamic than the Verite Open and Empyrean, but still plenty dynamic and fast. The mid-range on the RAD0 presents well and different from the other two headphones. There is zero fatigue in the upper mid-range, which is a huge plus. The mid-range is well-balanced, not overly warm, but with a nice touch of warm. 
When comparing the Rad Zero to the Verite Open and the Empyrean in the mid-range, it was very track dependent for me on which headphone I enjoyed the most. On some tracks, I preferred the sound of the Verite Open and Rad Zero in the mid-range, such as Love from Lana Del Rey, as I found the sub-bass bleed from the Empyrean was taking over Lana's vocals at times. On other tracks, I preferred the mid-range a bit more on the Verite Open and the Empyrean as the Rad Zero pushed the vocalists a bit too far away from me than I liked. This will come down to your personal preference and the rest of your audio chain you are using. Trouble on the Rad Zero is very well balanced and it sounds very good. It never sounded sharp to my ears. There is good air and plenty of sparkle to make them play exceptionally well with electronic music. Did I mention that I really love the Rad Zero with electronic music? The treble on the Rad Zero is part of the reason why. I don't think anyone will have any issues if you're treble sensitive. The most resolving of these headphones in the treble region is the Verite Open, then it's pretty close between the Empyrean and the Rad Zero. If you crave treble above all else, the Rad Zero is not a treble head tuning. Again, probably why I love them so much. As far as stage goes, as I discussed earlier in the review, the Rad Zero has a smaller but very accurate soundstage for being a bit more intimate sounding. It is very balanced and images very well. It can sometimes push vocals a bit further away in the mix than the Verite and the Empyrean. The singer's voices and the soundstage can also be influenced by the amplifier and DAC you are using. Finally, comparing the build and design, the Rad Zero is beautifully built and each pair is truly one of a kind, much like the ZMF Verte Open. I appreciate this about the Rad Zero. You can even have them custom made with your color palette and materials. I find this unique and something none of the other manufacturers offer, allowing complete customizations and materials at the buyer's request. The Empyrean is also brilliant looking and an engineering marvel. Honestly, all of these headphones are built very well and are a joy to look at, listen to, and hold. As far as comfort, all of these headphones are comfortable for longer listening sessions, in my opinion. The Rad Zero are the heaviest. However, they are very well balanced, so I never took issue with their comfort compared to other headphones. If you are sensitive to heavier headphones, this is something to consider. In conclusion, the Rad Zero is one of my favorite planar magnetic headphones, both for their quality of sound and their genuine one-of-a-kind build. I think if you are a lover of electronic music, pop, rock, metal, and other modern genres of music, you may love the Rad Zero as much as I do. If you want a proper one-of-a-kind pair of planar magnetic headphones designed and built in the USA by a legend in the audio industry, look no further than the Rad Zero from Alex Rawson. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, and check me out on Instagram at MRHiFiReviews and on my website MRHiFiReviews.com with more written content. Thanks again, friends, for watching. Leave me a comment with your thoughts on the Rad Zero and any other audio gear you want me to review next. Until next time, friends, much love.